Hello folks, welcome to Organic Gardening 101. My name is Stephen Lucky with Gardopia Gardens and today we're going to be talking about planting our garden. In episode 5 we talked about watering our garden, whether it's hand watering or drip line irrigation. Once your watering system is set in place, you can plant because that's what we're all here for, right? To grow fresh local organic produce for ourselves and our families. You need to think about what zone you're in, the USDA zones. You can Google it wherever you are in the country. In San Antonio and Central Texas, we are in zones 8B and 9A, depending on how far north or south you are in the city. Even though there are four seasons in San Antonio, you need to think about fall and spring being very similar, moderate 70 to 90 degrees. You can plant your tomatoes, your peppers, your cucumbers. You can do a little bit of roots like carrots and potatoes. You can also do corn, squash, beans, onions, and even strawberries. When you're in the summer, which is very hot, 100 plus degrees, you can still garden, making sure that you're watering on time. And you can do your melons, like watermelons, cantaloupe, honeydew. You can continue your peppers and your cucumbers as long as they're getting watered. And you can also do things like southern peas, purple whole peas, cow peas, as well as okra. In our winter, we have mild winters. We rarely touch down past 20 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. You can do your greens, your brassicas, your cruciferous. So we're thinking about kale, spinach, arugula, all different types of lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower. Um, you can do sugar snap peas, kohlrabi, and you can also do some of your roots like turnips, radish, and carrots. So as you can see, we can plant year round and grow food. San Antonio actually used to be known as the Winter Garden and produced quite a bit of food for our nation. When creating your planting plan, in addition to knowing what you can plant in the right season, you also need to take into consideration crop rotation and companion planting. Crop rotation is the idea of changing the crops in your garden bed season after season so that you're not depleting the soil of the nutrients that are withheld in it. So you have greens, beans, roots, and fruits. And if you had four garden beds, you could cycle throughout those year after year, season after season. If you don't have enough space to do proper crop rotation, you can plant year round. You just need to be adding soil amendments, fertilizers, and compost to replenish those nutrients, which we'll talk about in episode seven. Companion planting takes into consideration that different plants have different pests, including soil-borne diseases and insects. And so if you plant, for example, tomatoes and basil, the basil is going to produce an aroma that detracts certain pests that would attack the tomatoes. There's a ton of different lists out there that you can Google to figure out which plants work well together. Now that we've gone over seasonal planting, crop rotation, and companion planting, let's move to the garden and get our hands dirty. All right, folks, so here we are. This is a raised garden bed, four feet by eight feet and we have drip line irrigation. Now, talking about the crop rotation piece, we already have plants from the fall that are still growing. We're not gonna take them out, but we also still have space to put in winter veggies. So the winter veggies we have right now is a lettuce mix, some spinach, Swiss chard, and onions, which I'll be planting on the dripper. This drip line is similar to what we did last week, is half inch, 18 inch spacing, with one gallon per hour emitters. So I like to plant on the drip, exactly on the drip line, with the exception of our root vegetables that don't like to get as wet, which are these onions. And I'm gonna intercrop these between the rows. All right, so as I put this three and a half inch round lettuce in the ground, I'm gonna dig out with my hand trowel, a nice little spot for the plant. One thing that I think a lot of people don't quite do is put the plant in the ground deep enough. Tomatoes you can plant super deep. The rest of the plants you want to plant right about at the base of the stem where it starts turning into the root. And then you'll break up any large accumulation of soil all the way around and put it right in just like that. Now that we've planted our garden, the last step is to water it in. Even though we have drip line irrigation, 
when you first plant, you need to make sure that you're seeing new growth, and that means that the plants have rooted themselves. After that first week, you can back off and let the drip line irrigation water as programmed. For leafy greens and herbs, you can harvest within 21 to 45 days, and you can continue throughout the season. For flesh-bearing fruits and vegetables, it could take 60 to 90 days until you're harvesting, which hopefully you'll get a few flushes before it's time to kill that plant and get ready for the next crop. And that's how you create your own garden utopia.